President Obama said, we are already seeing severe weather patterns increase. Secretary of State Kerry said, climate change is happening and human activity is responsible. How do we, how do we go up against that? I'll just, how do we, these are on? Uh, again, you get educated by conferences like this, watching the talks, and you give as many people as possible, including your Congress people, you know, the real information. Uh, the fact that they said it, like Roy Spencer said earlier, the science does not verify those two statements. Uh, period. That's my comment. Boy, I'll tell you, I could get in trouble. Um, all I'm going to say is um, I don't think this is about science anymore. So <laughs> I, 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 if you're talking about the science aspect of it, it's like a bunch of theologians arguing over how many angels you can stick on the head of a needle. It really masks, it's a red herring for what's going on in the undercurrent, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. Let's, I'm, going to add, I'm going to add something, though. though. I would be dishonest to say that there's no reputable scientists who believe this stuff. There are, and they're doing research, but, the, but science is based on discussion and going back and forth like that scripture in Proverbs I showed. Uh, so they'll come out with stuff and say, yeah, look at all this study, look at these models, look at these OBS. Uh, in, in my talk from the seventh conference, you have a Webster et al. article with had Judy Curry on there, who has since kind of changed her, her tune, but showing how category four and five storms have doubled in the last 30 years. And he had all the data to prove it. But he got screams from all over the world from the tropical storms mailing list saying you didn't handle the data right. And this this basin, you can't trust that data, this one, blah, 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 blah. And uh, so people are coming out and publishing articles, and some of them really believe this stuff. I don't want to say they're all corrupt and all distorted and all biased. Some of them really believe what they're seeing, but, and the scientific, some of the scientific debate has been uh, quenched um, uh, by the bias, but some of us still debate this stuff. Well, I, 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 want, to add, I want to add to that just a little bit. You brought up political figures. You know, I think they're honest brokers in there, but what I want to know is if someone has spent their whole life on one issue, becomes identified with it, and he's being paid for it and worshipped for it and everything else, how do you walk that back? How, how can you possibly, I wrote an article in Patriot Post, can an AGW-driven scientist actually be objective given the, given the uh, climate today. You know, I'll take a, I tell people all the time, 1915, 1916 hurricane seasons. We had seven major hurricanes hit the United States in two years. How the heck do you know if they weren't category fives in the central <laughs> Gulf? Who was, who was flying around? Snoopy and the Red Baron doing the recon, like with Katrina when we're in these storms now. So I don't even know, you know I respect the President of the United States because to be elected, and he's, uh, I was taught that, but I don't know why these people would say it. I, I, yeah, I don't think along those lines. So. <laughs> Allow me my perspective here. I think what I wanted to say was, there is a media hype now, see. Any extreme weather event occurs, a heat wave occurs, ha ha, we see global warming. I had a slide which I couldn't show because of time, but I think during 1945, 1977, the climate was cooling. There were several dozen extreme weather events for mainland U.S., the most important were Hurricane Camille, July 269, about 250 killed, $1 billion damage. Next year, 1970, Bay of Bangladesh cyclone, quarter of a million killed. And I do not recall a single headline saying, ha ha, climate is changing, it is becoming worse. We are just now into it, a sort of a media hype. So it is more a media hype. Thank you. The media, too, that's another thing. Whatever happened to the journalists that we had back in the 60s and 70s that they, instead of marching around like sheep being led by the nose of slaughter, they actually would <coughs> dig in and look at a situation and try to say, well, maybe there's something I could write here that actually gets attention and tells the truth. I mean, can you imagine Bob Woodward today? Seriously, what would Bob Woodward be? He'd be sitting in there at cocktail parties, not... Uh, doing anything except following the uh, missive along. So things have really changed. It's not the world I grew up in, I'll tell you that. <laughs>
Let, let, me, let me just say real quick an anecdote with the media. I was interviewed twice by Madeline Nash, a wonderful science reporter for Time Magazine. And the issue on these increased hurricane activity was in their 2003, 2004 centerfold article. Uh, and then in 2005, I got called by Time Magazine again. And I was flying. I was on night flights. I was like, didn't want to bother. But hey, it's time. And they've done a good job with this. But see, it wasn't a science reporter. And the front page was, you know, Katrina, you know, are we making hurricanes worse? And Bill Gray and Chris Lancy and myself, probably three very, very prominent yep. hurricane climate scientists, were relegated to the skeptics at the end of the article, and everything was, was the other way. So it depends who's doing the interviews, but I applaud someone like Madeline Ash for doing even-handed reporting. Just to pick up on what Joe said, I'm going to be talking this afternoon on how global warming, dangerous man-made global warming, is actually just one facet of a much broader campaign, which is anti-development, sustainability, uh, keeping poor nations more impoverished, and so forth. So it's just one component of a much broader agenda, but it's been an effective one. We had a quick question. question over here. By the way, while he's going there, I again apologize for the problem with the slides. I think they let you download the PowerPoint so you can see the slides later on mine. And please take my handouts. I don't want to take them home. <laughs> um, I grew up in Lubbock, Texas, and the May 11th, 1970 tornado, yeah. my uh, father was the local newscaster, and his film made national media. Um, and I went to the national, or it was the Space Enterprise Forum in Washington, D.C. And in 2010, it was all science, it was awesome. In 2011, it was all politics. And they really latched on to the meteorologists need to be, you know, educated. It's the weatherman. When something happens in the world, everyone looks <laughs> to the weatherman for an answer. Well, the guy that was there, this professor <coughs> from Boston, he, was, he teaches, you know, and has these summer camps where these teaching kids that want to go to meteorology. He was total AGW, like crazy. And so I know that there's a big meteorology school, you know, around, you know, my husband was always going to Kansas on trips and stuff. But what's being done to educate the upcoming meteorologists so that they're not pulled into this media hype versus the real stuff? Well, I'll tell you what, the guys I know at Penn State, the ones that'll talk to me, the kids, they don't believe any of it. They, they smile and nod, and a lot of those undergrads there don't believe any of it. Did. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm encouraged there's some guys over there that are pretty objective about things. I've tried to get some of the old, older guys that taught me to say, listen, our department, you gotta stand up for this. But uh, I found that the kids that I talk to most of the kids, and maybe they just, because they follow me, they go, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, so that's good. There, there's a lot of info out there on this, and I speak on it whenever I can. And I spoke at the uh, Weather Summit in Steamboat Springs about a year and a half ago with meteorologists, TV meteorologists from the top markets and stuff, and I just plowed this in. None of them had any complaints with what I said. I said, but try and say this stuff on the air. There's a lot of censorship. Wait, Heidi Cullen, it was Heidi Cullen, correct? Uh, on the Weather Channel, their climate expert, I'm sure it made John Coleman real thrilled, uh, basically came up with a statement and says, nobody should have the American Meteorological Society's seal of approval if they do not, I don't know her exact quote, buy into this man-made global warming stuff. We were horrified. Talk about utter censorship. Even the people on the other side of it were like, no, 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 we don't want to go there. And uh, so there's an attempt, of course, to silence any opposing voice. But some of us just keep you know, speaking out the best we can. I'm careful what I say. My public affairs officer back at the lab, Erica Rule, she'll say, Stan, just stick to what you know, stick to your field, you know, of expertise. And I, and I do. Everything I say, I can verify, you know, that I showed on my slides. I think we have another. All right. Yeah, this is for anyone up there. Um, have any of you heard of the connection between solar mass ejection and uh, this kind of the spawning of tropical storms and hurricanes? Uh, I'll only say this, at, at that same weather summit, we had one of the top experts in space weather uh, share all the different things with the solar stuff. I don't remember it all, so I can't speak to that, but it certainly can affect things on Earth as far as how much 
with the uh, hurricanes. Maybe Bill Gray knows that one. I don't. I don't know that. Maybe someone here does. Okay. Time for one more. Maybe a quick one. The kids from McGuire are missing. So um, there are, I have heard many meteorologists and, and scientists in various other societies are disagreeing with this. Are people starting to set up their own organizations? Are people uh, challenging within the organizations? Because that's what normally happens in, in medicines when things like that happen. I, I want to set up the union of the most concerned scientists ever, and we're more concerned than everybody else. But. <laughs> There, there, there is a lot of pressure from the American Meteorological Society, sadly, on this issue, and, uh, but there's plenty of us who do speak out. And, uh, I'm not in the AMS. I would never want to be part of a club that wants me in it, so I didn't join. <laughs> <laughs> I don't vote on anything. I, I, I don't play well with others. You, you, have, <laughs> you have some polls that are taken by the AMS. You have some documents that people examine, but usually the people that control it have a lot to say on what actually goes in it. Dr. Gray's got a question. I mean, oh. Did Dr. Gray raise Dr. Gray, raise your hand. Listen, yeah, Bill is, Gray has a right question. There. We yes. stay Dr. here Dr. for Gray Bill Gray. Right no, he's right there. Yeah, I think he's right there. Right, yeah, I'll make sure. Oh, please wait for the microphone. Oh, I'll come here. <laughs> we want everyone. As I see it, we're all products. I mean, everything you uh, say is true. There's no objective reason why storms will get worse or anything. The global warming may do a little bit of damage or so on. But the way it all got started was the Club of Rome people and the people that said, oh, uh, with all the problems in the world, we need global government, and we need to come to grips with all these basic wealth and poverty questions and all this. And how can we unify the globe? We have to unify and have global government. And the only way to do that is to scare people. So let's, what better way, everybody's affected by the weather, how best can you scare them? Well, gee, it looked like uh, maybe CO2 could do it, you know, that's going to get greater. So let's scare them with that, and then we can control them and have global government, and we can have a bureaucrat in uh, Brussels telling us all what to do, mm -hmm. and the world will be better. So we're kind of products of people who were concerned for the weather, I mean for the world, and they wanted to do the best things, but their solutions just weren't practical. So it filters down, and here we're faced with storms getting worse when they're not, and all these sort of things, and we're forced to live with a <clears throat> Uh, with the uh, none of the facts agreeing to the theory. And we're sort of caught in this bigger international uh, vice or need to control the world. And we've got to fight that. And uh, yeah. yeah, I, I actually heard that uh, President Wilson, you know, used to dream of things like, well, how can we unite the globe? Hey, the weather, climate, you know, that's something that, you know, I actually heard that, but it's, a, it's not the world I was taught to grow up in. <laughs> you know, that fear issue is very critical because when there's a real storm heading towards the U.S., in 1988 when Hurricane George was headed towards the Florida Keys, and they were begging people, get out. If this thing intensifies further, it was a cat two, if it becomes a Cat 3, you will all be underwater. And Jerry Gerald got on, showed pictures of Hurricane Betsy hitting the Florida Keys and said, please take this seriously. Max Mayfield was on 
calling New Orleans, calling people as far as Hurricane Katrina, while the mayor, from what I understand, was talking to his advisors on what liability they would have uh, if the storm didn't hit. And Max was screaming, you've got to take this seriously. And he told people, he said, if you don't evacuate, have an ax. This is a scare thing. Have an ax with you because you're going to be in your attic and have to hack your way up through the roof, which people actually had to do. The problem with the AGW thing, it's like evacuating Miami for a storm that's 10 days away, and you can't trust the models. So they're saying, hey, this is going to happen in 50 years. The models might not be reliable. In other words, we don't want to evacuate. We don't want to scare people until there's real good cause, and they have greatly over-exaggerated the potential threat. Yeah, you guys did well on this this situation. This this was a big situation. July fourth at Hatteras. Oh, please, I mean, horrible. Wow. <laughs> but they you know, the English job. Guys, but you know what? Thankfully, they took it seriously and they said, "Yeah, we'd love to make lots of money this weekend, but we don't want to lose a lot of lives." Oh, my and they responded, "But that's the tactics they use with AGW, and we have to show how bad or or suspicious the science is." Yeah, that's a that's a nightmare. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you to our speakers. Excellent presentations.